Okay, so um, for the second uh, talk of the unconference slot here, um, we've got Vim. He's going to be talking to us about the, uh, the sort of media streaming uh, bit that he's working on called Pipewire. So over to you, Vim. Okay. Hello. My name is Vim Diamonds. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I work for Red Hat. I've been working on a little project for a while now. Um, it has a bit of history. I don't have any slides, but it makes you listen better. Um, it started with a little um, experiment uh, based on the bus to share uh, the cameras, the video for Linux cameras. And the idea behind that was to uh, share the camera uh, between applications. There is no way to do that in uh, Linux in a nice way um, and especially for uh, sandbox applications to allow them controlled access to the camera instead of just opening the device node and doing their stuff um, so browsers and uh, things that are connected to the internet so that was uh, a first attempt uh, using GStreamer and all of that um, but I grew unhappy with that um, in a way, um, because I was using GStreamer and I could do also audio, I could capture audio and it could actually also play back audio. I had this server thing going on and uh, then I was thinking, yeah, but I could actually write uh, a Pulse Audio as well or, or a sound server as well. Um, and there were ideas to actually write a Pulse Audio using GStreamer. Um, so I started thinking, okay, if I change uh, some things maybe I can I can uh, make something like bigger in scope. So I changed the scope a bit. Um, uh, I I decided to write I take a look at everything that there was uh, regarding multimedia, um, plugin APIs, uh, protocols for uh, for doing audio communication, uh, for doing multimedia scheduler. So and there were a couple of things that, that I liked. Um, and I started thinking and experimenting with these things. And currently, um, so I, I wrote a plugin API. I looked at all the plugin um, APIs, LotSpa and LV2, which are real-time processing uh, for audio plugins. And then there's other APIs like OpenMax um, for generic multimedia, GStreamer, of course. Uh, and I tried to form something that could do what all of these plugins did, the good, the good parts of all of these things. And I started like building up um, this, this whole new thing. Um, I used as a communication protocol instead of Dbus, I experimented with something Wayland-like. Uh, uh, with events and methods uh, on uh, on objects, um, I also included a lot of ideas from um, uh, Jack. So Jack is, is a, a server, an audio server used in professional audio, which has kind of like GStreamer graph-based processing. But you can have clients that um, add themselves to the processing graph. So that's kind of like the, the things I was experimenting with. And so it's like a hybrid between all of these, uh, these uh, uh, projects currently, Pipewire. So, um, yeah, what, what, why, why would you ever want to do something like this? Because rewriting or, or trying to do anything with or replacing existing things with something new is not so very easy. Um, well, currently what I have is, of course, the video capture from Video for Linux devices and sharing them between processes um, with Flatpak uh, support uh, to do access control and things like that. That is still the main goal. Uh, the way it's implemented is now kind of very generically done. So you can actually start building other kinds of applications on top of that, and I think that's going to be kind of exciting. Um, so I have, uh, for example, um, I can do audio capture as well. I can do capture of encoded video. Um, I, can, I have mixers as well, an audio mixer. I can have clients that mix audio. This is all kind of like prototype thing. Um, 
But um, it should, my goal eventually is that I can uh, run jack clients, professional audio clients, and consumer grade audio mixing uh, and playback uh, with one piece of software. And also do other kinds of m multimedia like video that goes together with the audio and stuff like that. So that's a very uh, big plan. So, um, yeah, so uh, what's so that's kind of what it's currently doing. Uh, the plan is to package this uh, for Fedora 27 as a first version. There is like proposals for uh, making that into an RPM. Um, and uh, in as a first plan, we would use the this to do desktop sharing. So the um, the compositor would uh, provide uh, onto on the pipewire daemon uh, a source that other applications can connect to, and that is actually just the, the screen as it's uh, being rendered. So then you can consume that information and, for example, encode it in RDP or any other remote desktop uh, protocol. So there, there is a whole setup to do this um, for flat pack applications uh, to get uh, securely a screen capture and nothing else. Um, I have other stuff and other bits that might be interesting to do as well. Uh, like for example, cheese can run on, um, on Pipewire as well. So then you could make a cheese, a flat pack cheese that, um, that you can run, connects to the portal to ask access for the device and goes to Pipewire to actually get the device that you um, allowed it to access and do things like that. So in um, the API currently is a uh, work in process. Um, so I have, a, I have a remote protocol and stuff like that, but that's not, I can't commit to that forever. APIs are versioned, so I can extend and change, but uh, it needs a bit more stabilizing. Um, yeah, so there's um, a couple of other things that I cannot exactly do uh, like what Jack does. But hopefully I'm, I'm kind of working on that to make a couple of shims to make it possible to have Jack clients um, run with Pipewire. So my plan is to see how far I can get and if I can actually propose something that um, can finally unify the, the professional and the, the normal desktop audio. There's a lot of work to be done, um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see where it goes. Um, yeah, was that fast? That was very fast. We have lots of questions then, <laughs> or none. <laughs> You're too late. Yeah, I, I can continue a bit more in details. Um, um, let me see here. Yeah, for example, um, for the, the API for the plugins, which is kind of interesting, um, it's like a hybrid between, between Open Max, Microsoft Foundation um, plugins. Um, and it's a bit different from what you do as a GStreamer plugin, but the GStreamer plugin does a lot of things uh, internally. There it's just an API that that you actually have to control a lot from the outside. So you have to tell it what formats to use. It doesn't do a lot by itself. Um, but it's written in such a way that um, it does not require any allocations whatsoever. So you can actually use it in hard real time uh, processing environments. And you are very flexible with the way that you give it memory and, and it's very controllable from the outside. So the plan is there. Well, um, one of the plans could be to write these little plugins and actually r uh, run them uh, inside the GStreamer plugin so that you can move some code from one way to another um, in order not to duplicate things. Um, so, um, yeah, for the formats, for example, I use exactly the same thing what GStreamer uses like properties and, and ranges and, and all of these things to describe media formats. The way it's done there is that it's, um, 
completely serializable. So you can allocate it on the stack in one go and you can actually send this between processes without any copying uh, and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So um, currently, the, this is also kind of neat. You have one API um, and it's kind of like GStreamer. So you can say like I have these, there is called nodes, what is called in GStreamer elements, and you can uh, link them together into a graph and then you can run that graph. Uh, but what you can also do is, for example, you make a little subgraph and then you can connect to another remote instance of, of a pipe wire. So every pipe wire is like a little daemon. Well, you can disable that, but you can have ones that are daemons and then you can connect to them. And then you can say this piece of plugin has to be scheduled in uh, that graph on that process. So for example, if you have a sync here that you have, you can schedule it in that graph where, for example, some video processing happens and you get like inter-process routing of uh, yeah, any media. So this is exactly what Jack does, but only for audio. I'm trying to extend that for, um, for all kinds of multimedia. So this is interesting um, in a sense that, for example, you would be able to run codecs in one separate process and have them be integrated into um, like for example the, the player process so if the codec crashes or something or there is some parsing error you have this side crashing but your main application being unaffected you could use a, a sandbox for example to run parts of your graph in um, so these the, of course there is a cost for doing all these um, these uh, IPC calls. So, but um, that's that's the general idea of uh, where where I'm trying to go with this uh, this attempt. So yeah. Um, yeah. So um, the way it's currently done as well is you have. Um, a, a set of modules that uh, are loaded uh, dynamically. It's kind of like Pulse Audio that does things. It's all kind of event based. So for example, if this happens, like a new client appears, it's uh, controlled on prop based on properties. This client, for example, wants to um, play media or something like that. Then there is a module that would control what will happen. It would reconfigure the graph, insert converters or hook you up to the mixer or something like that and have them uh, that client play music or something like that. So it's currently done with modules. Um, question is, should we do that with, uh, with scripts or something like that that's more controllable than code? Don't know that yet. Um, so I'm the currently the, what I'm a bit working on now is um, checking to see if I can actually get as low latency as, as Jack can get. So we're talking about samples, 30 buffers of 32 samples at sub millisecond latencies between, um, between processes. On Jack on my laptop can't really do that, but I'm hoping that I can get at least something that it can do on my laptop as well. Okay, does anybody have uh, any questions for Vim about Pipewire? <laughs> so, last time I, I had a look at when it was called Pinos last year, uh, it was mainly just a system daemon, but you seem to be saying now that you can use it in applications too. So would you have a live Pipewire in your application to some processing? Yeah, so yeah, it's just one, one application, yes. So the daemon is, just some component that you can start uh, as part of your application. Um, so the daemon itself, there is, there is still a daemon that runs uh, the video for Linux plugins and stuff like that, um, that you can then connect to as a remote. But basically, you can also start your own application and use those same plugins uh, in your own local pipeline. It's kind of like GStreamer. You can choose these things are run locally and these are do 
remotely. You need these kind of things um, typically because if, if you have a certain sound or video format that you capture from the server, maybe you want to convert it, things like that. So you can bring it into GStreamer and do the conversion there. But since I need these things anyway, you can also do it in Pipewire. Right. Yeah. Um, you mentioned uh, LV2, kind of like the audio plugins, which are used for audio synthesis. And does Pipefire extend to what would be almost similar to MIDI, as in synths, where you say, like, play this instrument at that MIDI note or that frequency and have polyphonic voices in such a way? So the, for MIDI support, um, I don't particularly have anything implemented yet in that sense. Uh, but MIDI is just another buffer with different content. Well, I'm not really thinking about MIDI. I'm thinking more about the... The, um, uh, the parameterization of, of... Yeah, parameterization, uh, well having like... Uh, curves on, on Synthesizers that um, do like physical modeling of a grand piano using Corpus Strong audio synthesis and similar things with reverb. And uh, uh, in that you could ask from an application of the system like play these notes on a piano. It wouldn't have to be MIDI, there's many kind of like other things, but do you take that kind of like multiple voices and positioning them in space? And is that part of what you'd be able to ask through IPC to, to happen? Uh, if you write plugins to do that, um, probably yes. So uh, what, what LV2 does, um, Pipewire can do that too. So LV2 has inputs, for example, for uh, curves of, of how parameters change. So if this is the input to your algorithms, you can provide that as well. Um, uh, like for example, LV2 has, um, has what is called this um, atoms, which is basically um, like a, a data structure, a serialized data structures where you can say which nodes play when, and it's like a whole organized thing. I actually have exactly the same thing that is compatible with that even. Okay, and I like that. then I presume also polyphony, so you have like multiple instances of the same voices at the same time. That that would be actually yeah. the problem of the plugin or your no, the node, so. I have totally no experience uh, with that. But... Uh, Um, I have a little trouble understanding where Pipewire fits in when it comes to audio playback. So thinking about any sort of application that would play audio, like say a video player, <laughs> for example, um, where Pipewire would fit in. Would the application talk to Pipewire? which would then talk to Pulse Audio, which would then talk to the kernel, or would there be a different position? Or do you intend on Pipewire replacing some of the functionality inside Pulse Audio so that we could you know, shrink it and make it simpler, for example? Because some, I mean, Pulse Audio is, is more than 10 years old now, I, I believe, and I'm guessing that some of the decisions that were taken at the time might have changed with technical decisions and maybe we want to move some of the processing, for example, that Pulse Studio does somewhere else? Yes, exactly. So, um, yeah, it, it's all way too early to, to say anything about this or to make any commitments of, the, of that kind. But uh, I would like to eventually replace Pulse Audio with um, with a model like uh, Pipewire. If that is at all possible, um, that is to be seen. But um, for example, a lot of decisions that were made for Pulse Audio, as you say, like rewinds and all of the, the handling that it does um, for zero copy, um, these things are a little bit questioned. Um, 
if that is all needed or not. For example, one of the, for the, the, the audio plugins that I did, I looked at CRAS. CRAS is the Chromium audio server. It's kind of simple. The way it wakes up in Alza and the way it fetches samples and plays them back. So um, in general, it's a, it's a bit more uh, elegant as an audio server there. So um, I, I would be happy if we could have an audio server that was a bit more like that. Right. The and that then also can do schedule low latency clients, jack clients. Um. Right. I'm thinking that Pulse Studio has also got some bits that are going to be particularly difficult to re-implement. I'm thinking Bluetooth both as a client and a server. And I'm thinking also it's an the mixer stuff. handling that's going to be absolutely horrible. I mean, um, Pulse it's Studio is complicated because audio is complicated and yeah. I'm wondering whether that's if you're going to re-implement that it it's is, it's yeah. probably going to be a number of years I'm guessing but Paul Studio is going to live underneath Popwire for the time being then yeah for the moment there is no plan to ever to not send your audio to Paul, uh, Pulse Audio anymore I mean if if the functionality is replaced by something else you can start doing that but before you have a replacement there is you can't. Be, I mean, implementing all of, of Pulse Audio is, is just a lot of work. So that. We only have time for one more question, I'm afraid, and then it's uh, Carlos's talk. So. Um, the Pulse Audio website or documentation uh, mentions that Pulse Audio is not in the business of uh, replacing Jack because the constraints and the concerns are not the same. Do you think this applies to pipeware? Um, I uh, <laughs> so there are they are very different, but I think that it doesn't have to be two different things altogether like that. I think you can have uh, jack functionality on a desktop as well, or you can have like a, a jack-like way of scheduling graphs and communicating with clients on, on a general desktop that is usable that is useful Microsoft for anybody. Yeah. Actually start the core audio the way that with the uh, the qu the comment was that Mac OS does both of them with the same routing daemon, right? With the caveat that they have a dialogue that comes up when you need to actually start the low latency mode with varying various DAWs. Hmm. Uh, I can which I don't know that if that's something we'd want, but and also the timing, presentation time type stuff needs to now connect between multiple layers. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's that's probably all we have time for. Because Carlos should really be starting now. So thank you very much, Vim.